Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about two important access modifiers, public and private. So hopefully by the end of this video, you have a pretty solid understanding of that and what that means in the context of creating our own classes. So yeah, let's get started. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. Okay, so where do we even begin? Well, we talked about fields in the previous video, which is pretty much just a variable, but it's at the class level. And each instance of that class can assign a value to it. So not every object has the same value for that field. Going back to the same example I've drawn like five times now, we might have a person class and one of the fields in here might be name. And let's just say it's a string name. So we give it a type and we give it a name. When we instantiate it, let's say we do it twice, we create two objects. Each one can have their own name. What? So yeah, it's pretty cool. So we could have an object down here where me.name is equal to Caleb. We could have another object where you.name is equal to nerd and so forth. So again, this is just the blueprint. We're saying, hey, each person should have a name. So hopefully by now you understand fields, a little bit how they work, but there's a key word that you might need to know about and that is public. When you create these fields, you might prefix them with the keyword public. So it'll look like this. But if they're private, we can do something really cool. So let's say this is private. Well now we can use this variable inside of the class and it's no longer accessible out here. So if we need to keep track of something inside of our class, that's how we do it. For example, we might define some method, a function to work with some data, and we might need to store that data somewhere. We can store that data inside of this field. It's private, so we don't have to worry about anywhere else messing it up. So a common way this is used is with getters and setters. So basically we can have this private field and we'll call it name. So basically this is just a visual representation of this and we can create methods called a getter and a setter. And what these do is basically gate access to this private field because these are gonna be defined up here. They can access this name and they can basically control how much access you get to this, this private field here. So we have a getter method which will allow us to get the information and get it over here. Then we have a setter method where we can pass in information to change that field and we can customize these to do different things. Maybe we can only get it a certain way or we can only set it to certain values. That is one example of what you might use private fields for. It allows us to have more structure and more control inside of our class. So you can kind of think of it like this. We have some object, we'll just call him me, and there's public stuff that's accessible outside. But then there's also internal stuff private stuff that might be useful, but isn't necessarily there for everybody to use. You can think of those as just kind of hidden in the background, like so. We can't access them from the outside, but we can somehow do that through these other methods, which for example, the getters and setters would do. So we can access this one from right here. <laughs> this is getting very like theoretical. So maybe I'm getting a, a little bit too far 